Hi, this is Bonnie Gray, and I'm your host for Breathe, the Stress Less Podcast. I'm so happy to say hello and welcome you to a new show today. I am the author of Sweet Like Jasmine, Finding Identity in a Culture of Loneliness. It's become the number one new release on Amazon for Christian biographies, and I just want to welcome you to pick up a copy and sign up for the free bonus gifts of a free audiobook narrated by me, yours truly, and you'll get a Stories of Faith guided journal. Go to sweetlikejasmine.com. I'm also the author of Whispers of Rest and Finding Spiritual White Space. As you know by now, I am super passionate about soul care. It's so important to take time to rest and refresh because life does get stressful. We need to take time out to do things that help our bodies get back to a place of peace, help our emotions to restore calm, allow God to speak to us and spark joy. Sometimes when we get so stressed, we can get really hard on ourselves. Like, what's wrong with me? Why am I starting to worry again? I know I shouldn't be worrying. Have you noticed that when we need grace the most, we need to be gentle with ourselves the most when we're really stressed out? We tend to be harder on ourselves. We tend to be more critical ourselves, but that is not the loving voice of our Savior. That is not the loving voice of our Savior. So today we're going to explore that topic of being gentle with yourself, quieting the stress of exhaustion. That's what we're going to talk about today. Last week, we talked about how we need to stop hiding our heart and take action when we feel lonely. And we talked about some of the soul care we can do so that we don't have to be lonely anymore. God loves your story. Our story goes in different chapters and different seasons, just like there are four seasons in life, right? There's summer, winter, spring, oh, I missed fall there. Summer, fall, winter, spring. Um, You know, we go through different seasons in life. Sometimes some seasons just last longer too, right? We are not in control of that, especially with this pandemic, but God is is always with us. So let's look at how we can be gentle with ourselves today. Well, I want to explore this topic by first asking you, what are the kind of shows that you've been watching during this pandemic? You know, there's so much that has been offered now in terms of streaming, so many different shows and movies. What kind of stories are you into? Do you like documentaries or are you into action flicks or dramas or you into comedies? What do you think? What is it that you've been drawn to? I think it's just so fascinating to ask people this question because I think your true personality kind of comes out. You know, the things that you reach for to get refilled, it's going to be reflected in your personality. What kind of things you like? God created each of us with a unique personality. Each of us likes different things. And it's just like God's creation. Just look at the trees. Oh my goodness, there's so many different trees that God created. So many different flowers. You you can't even possibly count all of them, right? It's a whole lifetime, even for those who study trees or flowers or biology. It's just a whole passion lifetime. So how much more precious are you than the birds, than the flowers? So much variety. I want you to understand that the way you deal with stress is going to be very different from another person. And it's important that we accept how we respond just the way God accepts us. He understands. And so rather than responding with a critical voice, we need to kind of first ask ourselves, where maybe was that critical voice first formed? Where was that first imprinted? You know, after a year of distance working via Zoom and screens, without delineation between our personal time and our work time, parenting and working from home. It's just all been meshed, right? There's no boundaries around work, parenting, um, our alone time. We didn't even have the alone time up until the kids went back. My kids went back to school. It's 18 months, 18 months, friends. (laughs) We are all in the same space. 
wow, we're all exhausted. It doesn't mean we don't love each other. It's just we're created to have that space. But yet, what is it that we can do to ease and to restore the calm as we're exhausted? And one of the things that really adds to the stress are the critical voices. It's the way we respond. There is nothing wrong with feeling the stress and the pressure. We're we're put into a very difficult situation that's going to cause exhaustion, but it's how we respond. And what do we do? And one, unfortunately, of our response could be negative self-criticism. So let me ask you, do you feel this way? How hard are you on yourself? How hard are you on yourself? I want to ask you that. Are you hard on yourself, dear friend? Be gentle with yourself. God is. In Psalm chapter 18, verse 35, it says, Your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. I want to double click on this beautiful verse. Your right hand upholds me. Let's take a look at that first part of the verse. God's right hand in scripture represents his ability, his might, his power, his care. And it's God that upholds us. Who is it that is holding everything together? Do you put those heavy expectations on yourself? Are those expectations realistic? Yet God says, I will uphold you. You cannot uphold everything. You don't need to uphold everything. Some things might have to fall off your plate. And even when that happens and people are not happy or things are not working out, plans are not working out, I will uphold you. I will be faithful. I am the author and the perfecter, the finisher of your faith. God is not done writing our stories, friend. And this difficult chapter, sometimes even being honest with ourselves that things are hard and I'm not going to be able to do this X, Y, or Z. That is a freedom that God gives us his grace. Is there something that we need to let go so that God can hold up and hold us up and carry us through? That's one of my questions for you, friend. Second, the verse says, your gentleness makes me great. Your gentleness, that is actually a fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I don't think we often focus on the word gentleness. What do you think? I think we focus on the first few, <laughs> love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, but gentleness sometimes is, it's so gentle. Maybe it's just kind of in the background, but it is equal. It's an equal importance of the fruit of the spirit. It's saying where God's presence is, there's gentleness. So if you're hard on yourself, I wonder where have you allowed your heart to go into? What expectations do you have of yourself that maybe others have put on you? Maybe circumstance has put on you, but even as you carry those, how can you be more gentle with yourself? This is a godly attribute that we can grow into is gentleness. Gentleness, you know, when it talks about the fruit of the spirit, it doesn't come from us, but we can nurture it. Fruit is something that we nurture. We water, we fertilize, we nurture, we protect, we guard against something that wouldn't be nurturing. So we need to nurture that gentleness with us. So I am just curious, where where do you find yourself today? Jesus whispers, it's okay, I've got you. I love you. I understand you. I will take care of you. See the gentle love in his eyes for you. Have you been hard on yourself lately? I want you to take a breath even now as you're listening. Inhale, exhale, deep cleansing breaths. The Holy Spirit is our breath. And so physically as we breathe, we allow the Holy Spirit to remind ourselves we don't have to hold it all together. Hudson Taylor, the missionary to China, he said, how to get faith strengthened, 
not by striving after faith, but by resting on the faithful one. By resting on the faithful one. Um, one of the, the soul care that I want to share with you, something that you can do to help you to heal from exhaustion is to make something with our hands. You know, when we think a lot, we're ruminating. There's exhaustion that comes from that, right? Exhaustion that comes from that. So when we do something with our hands, it breaks that rumination. When we do something, that part of our brain that's thinking, it kind of turns off so that we can, the part of our brain that does things with our hands, it turns on. So it relaxes that muscle. It releases the muscle where we're ruminating and overthinking and it activates the part of our brain where we're actually doing something with our hands. And that's why it's very freeing. Our nervous system can handle processing only a certain amount of information before we're overwhelmed, triggering a fight or flight response with anxiety and stress. Yeah, it triggers a response, friends, when we're feeling overwhelmed. It just is natural the way our body is. The repetitive motions of creating with our hands, whether it's drawing, playing music, gardening, cooking, music, photography, it returns calm to the nervous system. We enter a state of flow similar to meditation. So think about it. You know, we want to meditate on God's word. Well, one form of meditating with God is to do something you were created to enjoy. Remember at the beginning of the episode, I said, we have so much variety the way God created us. So what helps you uh, relax and helps you enjoy doing something with your hands? God is with you in that because God created you and he is with you. It creates this what's called flow and it activates dopamine. Dopamine is a natural mood enhancer. One study of 3,500 people with depression found that 81% of them reported feeling happy after knitting. I don't knit, but maybe you do. But the point of the study is not so much about knitting, but it's about doing something with your hands. So being gentle with yourself, the action you can take is to lay down that worry and burden and do something with your hands. That's an action we have to take. We don't just tell ourselves to stop worrying because that is more thinking. You understand, friend? We want to be present by making something, doing something with our hands. Now, as we're talking about critical voices, I asked you at the beginning, I said, where was that first imprinted on you? Well, for myself, my mother, I had shared earlier in the podcast this season that my mother and I, we were, I was born in San Francisco, Chinatown. My mother was a mail order bride from Hong Kong and she was 17 when she came to America and she had me when she was 18 years old. I have a teenage mother that brought me up. And one thing that my mother did was that she was an embroidery seamstress. This is another part of my story that I never told my children. You know, it's funny how sometimes as we create a new story with God, when I got married, I wanted to write a new legacy of faith for my children. I I didn't think anything in my past had of any good use towards this new story of faith I wanted to write with my children. And in fact, I felt that maybe if my children were older, when they become parents themselves, maybe I might share some stories with them. I just didn't see any need for it. But I was wrong. God was showing me, and this is what I write about in Sweet Like Jasmine, that God uses the beautiful things from our past and even our brokenness so that he can show us how much he loves us and that other people can know that God is beautiful, God is gentle, God is loving, that he cares for us in our broken moments. And so no matter how many times I say to my kids, God loves you, God is very loving, God is faithful, that is truth for the mind. But remember I shared early, we want truth in our mind, our heart, and our soul. And stories do that. Stories tell the story of the soul and how God is a part of our life in real 
human experiences. It's unique. It's not just a general biblical truth. You know, God was showing me as I returned to some of the stories in my life. My mom, um, she just was a type of person that first imprinted on me like a critical voice. And it's not dishonoring to my mom to talk about it. It's part of my story because we're all human. Everyone has flaws, but yet we want to show that in the flaws, God brings his love and God redeems us. So, you know, my mom was an embroidered seamstress. And one of the things she did is Chinese dresses, silk dress. I don't know if you're aware, there's a Chinese silk dress called Cheng Sam. That is a Cantonese dialect. If it it's Mandarin is called Chi Pao, and it's a form-fitting, beautiful dress for a Chinese woman of um, high status. And I always wonder, oh, will I ever be able to wear one as a little girl? They're just so beautiful. See my mom, you know, place these embroider these beads onto this. It could be peacock feathers or peony flowers. And, you know, I wanted to try on one of these, but one time when I did try them on, my mom said, you look so silly in it. Please take it off. Now, that moment was imprinted on that little girl's heart, which was for me. And God started showing me, what does that mean? What does it mean for me now? I tried to earn my worth through performing, doing things for the family and earning my praise that way. And so I never really explored that side of me, which was that critical voice that comes up when I don't feel like I'm doing a good job, or maybe I'm failing my family, that critical voice comes up. I mentioned this because as I share this with my children, as they, you know, situations came up and I said, you know what, you need to be easier on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Because I said, I grew up being very hard on myself. And I told them the story. And you know what, it brought me closer to my children because my son's felt like I understood. I understood why and why it's difficult when we're hard on ourselves. And they got to know me better and they were able to share with me how they feel when they're hard on themselves. All to say, friends, be gentle with yourselves. Hear God's loving word to you and let his words wash over you and let your actions be the way where you integrate this new voice in your life, where God says, be gentle with yourself. My gentleness makes you great. My right hand will hold you up. Well, friend, let's end with a time of prayer. <laughs> let's end with a time of prayer because we can express our hearts. We can be honest with God about how we're feeling and the exhaustion that we feel. We can get renewed knowing that God is gentle with us. Dear Jesus, give us courage to let more grace in instead of guilt. And when we're exhausted, please renew us, fill our tank up. Because when we know that we don't have to carry any guilt or self-criticism, then we're free to think about what are the things we can do? What are the actions that we can take? Thank you for the seeds of inspiration that you've planted in my heart. Ways that I experience joy things that I like to do with my hands. And if I've forgotten them, Lord, please help me to remember. Remember that these are important to you. Thank you for being there in my time of need. I need your grace every hour. In Jesus' name, amen. So friends, do you, do your art, because God created you individually as his work of art. And be bold, be bold, quiet, that critical voice by taking action to take care of you when you especially feel exhausted. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. Well, friend, thank you so much for spending time here today. May you be lifted up knowing that God sees you. He cares about you. He'll be faithful to help you. And with that knowledge, you can rest. You can take time out for yourself. You not only deserve it, but your body needs it and you can do it. Remember, you're loved and you're cherished. And I welcome you to pick up Sweet Like Jasmine, Finding Identity in a Culture of Loneliness. I want to share my stories with you. And at the end of each chapter, I share journaling prompts so that you can also draw closer to God and draw closer to other people 
as you may be involved in a small group or a book club, you'll love this book and it allows you to draw closer to each other and know each other better. Not just studying the scriptures together, which is very important to know what the truth is and help each other understand God's word. But God has also created us with a soul, which means we want to grow closer to each other as friends. And that means sharing more of what our stories have been in the past that have shaped us, shaped our faith, as well as shaped our soul. And we can grow closer to each other. And that is very refreshing. I can't wait to see you next time. We're going to be talking about dealing with depression and being kind to yourself. Depression is situational and it definitely is something that is happening to many of us. And um, it's not something that we need to hide. In fact, it's something we can talk about and encourage each other with. So invite your friends to listen to the next episode. And I can't wait to see you there. Remember you're loved and cherished. Just rest. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Breathe, the Stress Less Podcast, a production of lifeaudio.com and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. To learn more about Bonnie Gray or to check out any of the resources she mentioned in this episode, just head over to her website, thebonniegray.com, or check out our show notes. This episode was produced by me, Kelly Givens, and edited by Stephen Sanders. A special thanks to our executive producer, Stephen McGarvey. For more Faith Toolkit podcasts, head over to lifeaudio.com.